You have probably seen more of these Macs in your lifetime than any other computer Apple has ever released. They're still everywhere, so why do MacBook Pros of the Retina era last so, so long? The most obvious answer to that question is the laptop's hardware itself. There's plenty more to the story, but let's start here. Apple introduced the Retina MacBook Pro in 2012, selling it alongside the older unibody model as a newer, flashier computer. For 2012, it's not unrealistic to say that the Retina MacBook Pro was way ahead of its time. The display was and is the most striking thing about it. The 2560 by 1600 resolution was far above anything seen on pretty much any laptop ever until that point. In fact, it took the world a long time to catch up. Try comparing a 2012 Retina display to that of a modern Windows laptop. The quality probably won't be any better, and I bet you the colours won't be as deep and full of contrast. Fun fact, Apple used the exact same 2560 by 1600 resolution on some of their M1 machines sold until early 2024. As far as the rest of the design goes, the Retina MacBook Pros were hugely thinner than the unibody ones that came before. The unibody 2012 Pro was 2.4 centimeters thick, while the Retina model of the same year came in at just 1.8 centimeters. It's a quarter thinner but it's a dramatic amount. In fact Again, MacBooks didn't really get much thinner than the Retina family. Apple certainly pushed for thinner devices for years to come, but after a plethora of heat issues leading up to 2019, they stuck with slightly thicker models to dissipate heat more effectively. The Retina models are very close to the size of current MacBook Pros, and they certainly don't have major overheating issues, even after all these years. So the pattern is becoming obvious. Apple were perfecting their craft with the Retina MacBook Pro line. As a result, a lot of these features are still visible on the 2024 MacBooks. What about the insides of these machines, though? How are Retina MacBook Pros able to stay sharp over a decade after their release? Well, a big clue lies in the processors inside these laptops. 2012 to 2015 were real peak years for Intel, who created the CPUs inside all Macs at the time. Intel were far ahead of their competition, especially when it came to mobile or laptop chip performance. They were innovating year on year, introducing turbo-boosting clock speeds just before the 2010s, and regularly adding more cores to their latest chips, which would invariably be included inside Apple's computers. These micro-lithiographic leaps and bounds were paying off, as you can see. In 2006, Apple and Intel's long partnership began, and Intel were doing swimmingly. Their share of the CPU market rose from about 50% that year to above 80% from 2015 onwards. This wouldn't last forever, though. Once Intel hit the very peak of their success, they seemed to sit on their lead, denying MacBooks past the 2015 Pro any real CPU upgrades. Alright, so let's compare the final Retina MacBook Pro to some of the MacBook Pros that arrived in the years after it. The 15-inch version of the 2015 Pro managed to score 3,836 in Geekbench 6's multi-core test. Two years later, and the top-spec 2017 MacBook Pro scored just 3,779. Multi-core performance went backwards somehow in the Touch Bar MacBooks of 2016 to 17. Geekbench 6's single-core CPU benchmark tells a similar story. Our 15-inch 2015 MacBook Pro scores 1,160 while the top spec 2017 is at 1,186. This time, the 2017 is ahead, but by just 2%. By 2018, other chip companies like AMD were beginning to catch up to Intel. Come 2019, they were under a lot of pressure to make some bigger strides in the CPU world. AMD's Ryzen had released a couple of years prior, and processors with a lot of cores were becoming the norm. As a result of all this, it's clear that AMD took a pretty big chunk out of Intel's market share, going back to the page we were looking at. Eventually, Intel did defend their lead pretty well, and Apple of course went on to design their own computer chips. This story isn't about the processor market though, it's about the Retina MacBook Pro line. So going back to these laptops, how do they actually perform in the real world these days? Well, pretty impressively for their age. A lot of this comes because Apple are pretty good at supporting their devices with OS updates for years after their release. The 2012 Retina MacBook Pro got 7 years up to macOS Catalina, which dropped in 2019. The 2013 and 14 Pros went up to Big Sur from 2020, and the 2015 Pro got Monterey, released in 2021. With the OpenCore Legacy Patcher, you can actually run the latest version of macOS on these machines just fine. 
I tend to stick to their latest official releases though, as laptops run a fair bit slower and less stably while patched. There honestly haven't been many groundbreaking features on newer macOS versions since too, so it's not like you'll be missing much. Something missing from a lot of these older OSs though is the latest in security features. Surfshark have sponsored today's video and the Surfshark VPN app has a lot to offer in terms of security. With the latest in encryption technology, it keeps harmful websites and even dangerous Wi-Fi networks from getting data like your IP address and session IDs which could easily lead to you losing your most valuable online accounts and data. As well as keeping your devices secure, Surfshark can save you from losing money to price discrimination. Did you know that a lot of companies will track your IP address while you're shopping for products on their site and might show you higher prices depending on your location? I can't stand my data being gathered like that, which is why I've started to use the VPN. I'm big into tech and use a lot of devices sometimes, but Surfshark offer unlimited devices with their subscriptions, which is something a lot of others won't offer. They also have a no-fuss 30-day money-back guarantee. You can get four extra months of their service for free using my channel's code W-O-Y-S. Just scan the code on screen now or look for the link in the description down below. So back to the insane popularity of those 2012 to 2015 Retina MacBook Pros. It's likely a lot of people bought and still buy these because of how repairable they are. In case you weren't aware, Apple have consistently released some of their least repairable laptops in the years since the Retina MacBook Pros came around. This means the 2016 and later MacBook Pros have storage drives that are soldered to the logic board. I mean, do I need to tell you why this is bad? This is pretty disappointing for those who'd like to upgrade the storage size of their laptop themselves, but imagine the issues non-removable drives cause if you're trying to safely remove data from the machine when it breaks. All of the Retina MacBook models have removable SSDs which can be replaced with relative ease and at a reasonable price. It's a similar story with batteries on these devices. You'll find Retina MacBook batteries are far easier to replace, with most going for $35 or so. Despite the battery being glued in place, I was able to replace the one inside this 2013 machine in about 30 minutes, giving it a new lease on life. Okay, so it's hardly replaceable RAM like on most 2012 and older MacBooks, but it's certainly worth taking into consideration. Despite them being relatively easy to repair, Retina MacBook Pros had a certain degree of longevity built into them from the start though. Apple were pretty vocal about the MagSafe connectors they introduced to MacBook Pros from 2021 onwards, but these things had MagSafe almost a decade earlier. No broken USB-C ports like on the Thunderbolt 3 enabled Macs we saw in the tail end of the 2010s. Remember the extra thickness I mentioned this laptop having over its successors? This gave Apple space for more solid internal connections to their displays, avoiding the flexgate problem that kept ruining displays on the 2016 to 2019 machines. One other thing that's kept the Retina MacBook Pros so popular is that with their age, their prices have dropped considerably. Look on eBay or other used sites now and you won't have to pay more than a couple hundred dollars for a very usable and modern feeling machine. A 2013 13-inch MacBook Pro like this one can be found for under $130 if you're lucky. And for things like web browsing and doing office tasks like writing documents or even editing photos, this thing is running absolutely fine. Apple is still writing native support for Intel processors into modern macOS versions like Sonoma and the soon-to-be-released Sequoia, so you're guaranteed another two years of security updates if you're willing to patch your OS using the OpenCore Legacy Patcher. When you can get such a cheap machine that will perform the tasks you want it to perfectly for years to come, it makes no sense to go out and buy a new $1,000 machine from Apple. I guess it's no wonder the Retina MacBook Pros are used so widely to this day. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe for another video each week if you're into using old tech further than their manufacturers perhaps anticipated. And if computers in general are your thing, why not join the hundreds of us in the What's On Your Screen Discord server? You can support the channel financially by subscribing to my Patreon too if you really like what I do here. Huge thanks goes out to those already supporting the channel, and I'll see you all next time.